I think I'm going to try and do a night sky on this one. Not all, not a galaxy sky, but a night sky. And I've got some heat. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Now I've decided to sit down and start another page from the mouse guard. Now I've not coloured many from this uh, colouring book. Now I did check before deciding to film this. I did find a few copies on uh, UK, eBay for sale. The class is second hand but the two that I found um, they were beautifully looked after. I don't know where else you, you can get them. I did look on um, boot depository I couldn't find it and it's not available on Amazon it's uh, I think it's out of print this boot now but it's such a lovely lovely colouring book and this is the page that I've chosen to do so I want to base it all with watercolour all of it now the watercolour palette that I'm using even though it says Arteza Arteza on the tin it is not it's mixed brand from Paul Rubin Sminker uh, Windsor & Newton professional paints and Cotman's and then all these ones down here are Paul Rubin, are they Paul Rubin or I can't remember I think the Paul Rubin watercolour paints at the bottom I got them in a tube form and I just panned them and I'm popping it a little bit of washi tape on the border because I do want to try my best to keep this as crisp as possible the paint brushes that I'll be using will be the Princeton Neptune paint brushes. Now depending how quick this is uh, to dry it depends whether it'll be a one part or a two part of this. I don't really like using the heat gun all that much uh, especially in boots that I really really like because it tends to bend the paper and obviously I've only got the one copy of this book and I don't fancy destroying it. So you know as I say, it's just paper at the end of the day. I will try and be careful, but if we have any mistakes, it, it not to worry. Not to worry, it happens. It happens to the best of us. So let's get all this protected. I might even go in with like a black acrylic on the background. I don't know. Depends how this uh, little guy turns out. But the reason that I was drawn to this illustration in particular it's because I wanted to do, I've just run out of tape, so is that enough? It might just be enough. Um, I wanted to do a glow effect coming from the little lantern. Let's see if I can get away with this without using another piece. Just, just about, there's a tiny little gap at the top, but I'm sure we'll get away with that. So that one's done with now. I'm getting through them washi tapes, so I probably should have done this beforehand, but I'm going to pre-wet the whole of the palette because I'm not 100% on the colours that I'm going for. So I'm just going to wet the whole thing, leave it for a minute or two, decide my colours and then come back. Now, I know it sounds like I'm putting loads and loads on, but there's not, there's not loads and loads there, but it's just activating them nicely. Now in this palette I've got one, two, three, three really nice uh, blues, almost turquoises and a really unusual brown and then a really unusual grey. I'd like to get these five colours used so I might use the brown for the little mouse guy and then try and incorporate the green somewhere else. Like, that's fine, we could do the, the leaves green. I want a cool tone silver, which that grey would be perfect for, I think. So, well, we can either do grey or brown for the mouse. So, I'll decide all that. See, that could be brown as well. <laughs> I'll decide all that and then come back when the paint is all ready. So, I'll just pull these clips out as well. And as I was thinking about the colours, I think I'm going to try and do a night sky on this one. Not, all, not a galaxy sky but a night sky and I've got some beautiful like paints, grey colours in this palette that I think will do the trick. Now I'm just putting these clips on because I want to keep the paper as flat as possible. When I start adding paint it will start buckle, buckling so I want to keep it as flat as possible. 
Now with me mentioning about the background, the camera's flashing at me already. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and do that first. And I'll let that dry and then do the other areas. Excuse you, Rollo. Um, I'm wondering, with the, the leaves, can I purely get away with using watercolour on them? No, I did think, should I gesso this page? And I'll be honest with you, I've only just decided to sit down and uh, film this video and you have to leave the gesso to dry for 24 hours. So, in saying that, I might pick another page to gesso and then maybe film that next week. Maybe. So I'm not leaving these in the water, just pre-wetting them, getting them all ready. And I think I'll go... I'll go with the larger one and see how I cope. Because I don't want to be too messy. So this is a size 12 and it's a round. So let's get some of this Payne's Grey activated now. My watercolour palette is super messy. Just goes to show how much it gets used. So I'm just going to clean it a little bit. Got clean water. Get some of this Payne's Grey mixed. Now, I was silly when I did this palette. I didn't put any of the colour names on. So I have got tubes of paint and when these run out, I'm going to struggle matching them. So don't make my mistake. So I do want a little bit of blue added to that. Just a touch. That was more than a touch, Debbie. So a little bit more of paint's green. I'm going to have to water this down now. See, this is why I've got a lot of um, paint left over on my palette because I go over the top. <laughs> I go over the top. I want one colour and then it turns out another and then I carry on mixing. So instead of doing that, I'm going to be smart. I'm going to get a palette, another dirty palette. Well, it's not too bad, I suppose. Put some of this colour on here. And see if I can mix the correct grey, painted grey that I want. That shouldn't be too bad. Still a little bit more blue than I wanted. Get in there. Let's just go for it. Put that there. And we'll start off. Because the paint uh, brush is fully loaded, I'll start off in the largest area. And I'm hoping this doesn't bleed through. It's been a very long time since I've done anything in this book. So your guess is as good as mine how it's going to behave. I got this, I think I got this book right at the start of my colouring and some of the pages in it are slightly shocking. I'll bring you down in a minute. Okay, you ever so closer. But I do want to leave some blotchy lines and splodges that's I am doing that on purpose I might even I could add salts but if I add the salts then I'm gonna have to leave it to dry overnight which I didn't want to do but salts can create a really really beautiful effect you just have to make sure that the paper is wet enough uh, but not like puddling like causing puddles like this but you don't want it completely dry Let's add a little bit more. See, I mixed way too much paint. But with it being watercolour, I can reactivate it, so... It doesn't matter. Be a little bit more careful around these areas. That's the beauty of, of these Princeton brushes. They've got a beautiful point. So even though it looks like a, a huge brush, you can get into really tiny areas with it. I think this will be a quicker way and then going in fully with pencils everywhere. It's like when you base the picture with alcohol markers, it's similar to that. But this watercolour will add a tooth to your paper, so it will eat at your pencils a little bit more than smooth paper. Just so you're aware. I don't think I'm going to have to load this brush up again. We'll see. And the paper seems to be handling it quite well. 
Now the reason that I've gone for a dark background is because I want the the lamp to pop. Is it a lamp? Torch. So I've been a little bit more careful around these intricate bits. And then while it's still wet, I'll load up my brush and just pop it in random areas so we get some nice drying patterns. Let's move this out of the way and not dip my finger in it and not turn the light off. <laughs> there we go. A little bit more around here. Now, if I do use the heat gun on this, it will peel up the masking tape, which is another no-no. So I think I'm just going to have to be a little bit patient. I mean, I can look at other areas that I could start painting while this was drying, but everything, <laughs> everything's touching the background. So instead of adding any more paint now, I'm just cleaning this brush off. That's it. Switch to a smaller one. And then just move this paint around. And then while I've got this brush out as well, I'll just put a couple of drops of clean paint. Just randomly. See, it's forming, forming a puddle there. I don't like this effect. So I'm going to lift some of that colour up. Same here. Add some more clean water. It's puddling here as well. So lift a little bit up. Now this is the part where I am going to have to be patient and I'm the worst person in the world for it. Um, I'm wondering, let's add a little bit of black. It's not black as such this, it has got all the tinges of colour in. But just to change it up a little bit, I don't want the same colour absolutely everywhere. Maybe a little bit around here. I'm just taking a step back so I'm just leaning right back and seeing where I want a little bit more of this colour. I don't want to mess around with these areas because they're practically dry here and here. So I don't want to mess around with them. I have got a really nice purple I could use. Am I going for the purple? Probably not. So it's having a mess around and seeing what colours go together and what colour scheme you, you want to go with. Don't want any up there, nearly. Right, I think I'm happy with that so far. So I'm going to leave that, not mess with it. And then come back and then probably start the leaves I think. So I'll, I'll mix the colours and get them ready in my little palette here. Uh, some of these colours I can't get off, they're literally acrylic. <laughs> I didn't clean them up straight away. So we will be back when it's completely dry, or more or less 85% up to there. So I'm quite happy with uh, the amount that that's dry now. I've still not used the heat gun, even though I was tempted. So I'm going to go ahead in with one of these sminker colours. 
Now these are super granulation or granulating uh, watercolours. So I'm really curious how they're going to behave. Let's do a little swatchy swatchy. That might be a little bit too much. Let's add a little bit more water. I do know that uh, the separating watercolours do work best with plenty of water. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll start off. Have I missed some of the background there? Well tough, it's all going to be green now. <laughs> it's all going to be green. Because I'm sure it's meant to be leaves behind it anywhere. So that's what it's going to be. Yeah, you can see colours of yellows, greens, almost even blues as well popping through there. Really interesting. Add some more. I think I might, shall I do the same effect with the water? Because I want these to be quite defined. I didn't want to have to go over with the pencil, you know, and cover up the marks that the watercolour is going to leave. And I was tempted to use watercolour pencils on this. I thought better of it. Because they do take me a lot longer. A lot longer to do. So we've got a couple of leaves at the bottom as well, so let's not miss those out. I'll lift it up to the camera in a minute and you can really see the different colours poking through. So let me move these. Without completely knocking everything out of there. You can see there's greens, blues, yellows, mixture of shades in there. Oh, while it's still wet, now, I know that this one is a Daniel Smith watercolour. I'm going and I'm kicking myself now for not writing down the names. I didn't even make myself a swatch chart for this, which is really silly, really silly of me. So I'll put this darker colour down the centre initially and then blend it out a little bit more. Where's my colour? There it is. See, it's doing its own thing in a way now. I'm bleeding, bleeding out where it wants to go. We'll do it as well on these back leaves. Sort of doing its own thing already before I'm even messing with it. So clean my brush off. Blend some of these edges out. Watercolour does dry a little bit lighter than what you're seeing now. So, might need a little bit more. Just down the very centre. This time I'm not going to blend it out. Because I'm chancing making the, uh, the paper pill. And I really, really do not want to do that in this book. I know you probably can't see the bottom one. I can't move it up. I'm happy with them for now. Let's add a little bit more there. Tell a lie. Yeah, I'm happy with them for now. So I think we'll move on to the mouse. So I'll switch back to the number 12 brush. And I think I want him grey. Him grey and then the brown twigs. And then some sort of yellowy orange. For this. And then maybe gold. And then his cloak. I will decide that later, <laughs> I'm not sure. So, I need a clean bit in the palette. Plenty of water. I'm spilling it everywhere. I've just put a fresh mat down as well and I decided to get a white one. A white one, why, I don't know. I should have got a black one. Right. 
that is acrylic paint as well that you can see the it's completely dried make sure that's mixed well and then just go ahead go into the biggest area while the brush is fully loaded try and be quick because it, with it being a larger area I don't want to create any marks there that I don't want there. Now from remembering, I'm sure that this is a similar sort of paint. So it's got different colour undertones so it might look grey initially and then when it starts drying, yeah it is. It's like separating, it's so cool. So cool and these are the Sminker watercolour paints. But they are quite expensive, I will only ever buy these if they're on offer which on Jackson Art, they do have them on offer quite often actually. So, his hands are right as well on this, so let's do his little paws. Missed a bit further. So this has got like purples and pinks almost underneath. They're just weird these paints. That's that's the only way of me describing it. They're really unusual. And then we want to go onto his fur. I'll fill in his little feet and his tail, but I probably will go over the top of them with a different shade. But I just want to get rid of that white of the paper, and then I've got a nice undertone of this uh, grey to work with with pencils later on. So I think he's got, he's got like little bandages around his legs, just the, so we don't want to go over them. Filling his tail, this other leg, yeah I can see the purples and the blues coming through. Let me see if I can get you down a little bit closer without banging absolutely everything. And move it up and you might be able to see as it's drying. The different shades that are coming out. It can be a little bit messy here because it's at the edge of the paper. And then his little tootsies. Add some more paint here. It's really unusual this stuff. If you don't like, if you've got it in your head that you want a grey colour going down, I would not use these paints because they do just change. And I've we just realised there's a tiny little line there that I've missed. So hopefully that won't stand out too much. So I'm going to have to be patient with this again and let it dry. But you can see it's starting to buckle so if I just move it up you can see here it is starting to buckle so I'm going to have to be careful. So the ear I'm going to be really naughty and add a little bit of black that paint that I've already mixed and I mean just the smallest amount and add it to the shadowing that's on the ear a little bit more don't bleed the let's see how that dries I suppose I could do the lantern now I could do the lantern and get that base colour down so let's switch to a number four brush and this is a Daniel Smith colour, this orange. Let me just test, yep it is. I'll fill in. Ooh, needs some more water, that is dry. Fill in all these areas and I might use a, a metallic watercolour paint in gold 
the rest of it maybe. Have a gel pen. If you can hear any noise in the background, my, do my dog's just started snoring. <laughs> That's what you can hear. This doesn't have to be perfect by any means. So I'm going over the top of pencil. So while I'm at it, could I get away with doing his cloak? I'm not sure the colours that I want. I think I want more of a bluish tone, and this is one of the sminker colours again. I mean, that's not going to show up much, is it? Um, let me try in this a little bit. So that's more... You see the yellows in it? Add a little bit more water to that. Let's give that a mix. So maybe I want it all very, very, very similar, similar colours, apart from the light. Then that will make the light stand out even more. Yep, that's what I'm doing. Perfect. Snap decisions. So let's see his cloak. All this colour. Now this again is the sminker one so it will separate this and look slightly different. I haven't used these paints in a little while so I can't remember the, the different colours in each of them. I'm going to do all of his clothes in it. Just so he's matchy matchy. And then we can do a beautiful light effect coming from his little lamp that he's holding. His sword, silver or gold, silver or gold. I think the gold will go with the the colour with the lamp but I'm thinking of silver just like Jon Snow's sword, that's what I'm thinking, that colour if you watch Game of Thrones you'll know who I'm talking about is it called Longclaw? the one that he got given we've got this part of his clothes as well see them all the same buckles going to be gold or silver I sound very un undecided, don't I? I want to bring you out ever so slightly now because I think I want to do the brightness of the twigs. We might as well try and get as much of the watercolour done and then I can leave it to dry in peace. Uh, so let's get some, mix in some of this brown shade. Want a little bit more water down. Now I've mixed this brown with a tiny bit of the grey that I used for the little mouse guy. And it is puddling a little bit there, and I don't like that. So I'm using my other brush here just to lift some of that colour. Don't like that effect that was happening then. I'm just fill this in. Just a very light brown. Very light brown. But it'll do the trick. I can always go ahead and add some darker bits of brown here and there. Because I don't want to have to use pencil on this but. I want to be very laser. I just think they're just adorable these pictures though. I don't pull this colouring bead out all that often. I should do more I think. Just add some variation to it. Maybe some shadows where we're standing. Now, if I got an even deeper brown, that might be deep enough, maybe. 
Well, that's not too bad. That's more of like a, a ready brain, that one. Right, so we're not faffing with that. What colour shall I do? His little beauties. I've already decided. I saw the colour straight away. And I've already decided. Is this like a really true green? This one. Really, really bright green. I'm not going to go all the way to the edge because I want to blend that out. Same with this side. And this is a Winsor & Newton. Uh, the, one of the professional pans paints. So I'll clean up my brush and very carefully just wet that area and then just let it bleed into that colour just to make it look like it's almost highlighted. And same with this side. Now the soft job, the sword, the sword. I'm going to sheet because I want the the handle to be really dark blue. Too much paint. Now this is just a concentrated version of what I use for the background. So I didn't mix any more paints, I'm trying to keep it all very very similar. Any top then. So the sword, the sword is uh, the bit that where I'm struggling because I don't think I've got a colour that I've, I've got a colour in my head that I want, and it's not that is true black. So I'm gonna have to really water that down. I think this is just a Paul Rubin one. I'm gonna test. I'm gonna cheat and test on the back of my hand. It is really a. So the highlights on that side. So I need the. This is going to have to come off now, it's in my way. And it's left indents. Perfect. <laughs> so I want this to be darkest on this side. And then when I'm doing the highlights from the, the lamp, it'll show up more. So I'm going to pick a little bit more of that colour up, which is the. Well, I said a little bit, not that much. Like that. And then pull the colour straight across as best as I can. You know, let it bleed across the same way that I did his little feet. And that's as best as I'm... I'm going to get, and I've just realised what the timing of the video is on. So this unfortunately is going to have to be in two parts. So really I've timed that really, really well. Because I can let this dry overnight, not mess with it, come back tomorrow. I'll take the masking tape off and uh, we'll work on the rest together. But I think just a little bit of pencil shading on this little dude. And do this effect that I'm thinking of. And add some metallics or sparkles somewhere. And I think I'll be quite happy with this. And it'll be mainly done in watercolour. I'm just checking the back of the page. And it's not bled through, but it, it has buckled. It has buckled. Um, but I hope that you, you did enjoy this video and just seeing me use the different sort of paints in, in different ways. And hopefully the next part of the video, I will be filming the next part tomorrow. So it'll be up the day after whatever day I put this one up. But thank you so much for watching. Please do like the video if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.